Hey guys, it's Sheev the Wise, and this is Vader's Lair. Join me, and together we can rule the galaxy. Today we're going to do a Bad Batch Episode 3 breakdown. Let's get into it. At the start of the episode, the Bad Batch is going through hyperspace, and it appears their ship has been damaged after leaving Seleucami and fighting against the clones. Hunter, being the leader he is, goes to check in on Omega, and we see Omega just chilling out, hanging with a gonk droid, kind of like this. Hunter is handing out food rations to the team, and after handing Omega hers, Wrecker comes out of nowhere and all of a sudden wants more food than just his one piece. Now, Hunter tells him that they have to ration, especially after abandoning the Empire, and Wrecker is clearly visibly sad about it. <laughs> Wrecker tells Hunter that he isn't used to having Omega around, and that's when the power glitches on the ship. The scene transitions to Echo telling Tech he could repair the ship faster if he had a little help. However, Tech is busy creating a scanner for the crew's inhibitor chips that would allow them to know if they're still active or if they have malfunctioned. After everything that happened with Crosshair, you really can't blame Tech, and it is a very smart move to create a scanner that would allow them to know if their inhibitor chips are still working. After that, Tech tells Echo that the system's diagnostic repair said that no critical systems had malfunctioned, and right as he says that, of course, they get pulled out of hyperspace. Hunter comes from the other room and says, getting thrown out of hyperspace seems pretty critical to me, Tech. And then Tech seriously says, well, it isn't affecting life support, so we'll be okay. And Tech is such a savage. <laughs> I freaking like Tech's character a lot. Like For a dude that is so smart, Tech is really just not the brightest sometimes, it seems, but he really is weird. He's a very smart character that, like, he's bold and, like, I don't know. I think he just believes in his calculations so much that, like, he doesn't get worried about them crashing. <laughs> As the ship starts crash landing on a moon, Wrecker tells Omega to prepare for her first crash, and Hunter tells her to strap in. As the ship is going down, Wrecker smacks his head onto the bar that is holding him in place in his seat. And it seems that when he bangs his head, he, it's almost like a clank can be heard. And maybe that's just the dense nothingness that's in his head. Or maybe it's the metal inhibitor chip that's in there. Following this, Wrecker repeatedly says, We're gonna die! We're gonna die! And then when he sees the terror on Omega's face, he goes, we're gonna be fine. And that just, that was a pretty good moment. I thought it was pretty funny. For me, Wrecker honestly reminds me a lot of the Zeb character, but he also has that like clone kind of feel, but also there's not really any other clones like him. And that's why Wrecker is so unique. The team crash lands safer than honestly most crashes in Star Wars. And uh, you know, it's just another happy landing. Omega asks if it's all over as we transition to the next scene where Echo talks about how their comms were knocked out from the storm on the moon. And Tech suspects that a capacitor was knocked out during the crash and that they only have one more left on board. Now they need the capacitor to leave the planet and at this point Omega knocks down a crate and asks if it's in there. The team is all stunned and stands as this crate is actually Crosshair's weapons kit. The team has a moment where you can really feel the awkwardness and tension, and then Wrecker tells them that he misses him, to which Echo replies, he shot you. And it's really cool to see that these four brothers that were all like mutants, although like Echo is still part of the team and Omega's part of the team as well, but really feels like the original four Bad Batch members really had a bond and were brothers, and they all really do miss Crosshair. A lot of the things in this episode and a lot of the scenes almost mirror each other throughout the episode too, and this is just the start of that mirroring. Tech reveals at this point to the team that it was likely the inhibitor chip that influenced Crosshair to make the decisions that he did. Echo asks if it can do that, and it's at this point that Omega confirms that that's exactly what the inhibitor chips were intended to do. And that's actually been one of my theories that Omega knew from the first episode that Crosshair wasn't in control of his decisions because of the inhibitor chip and she knew about the inhibitor chip because she is a medic. This whole scene really illustrates and hints that Crosshair might eventually come back to the team. 
as they talk about potentially trying to rescue him later on. In fact, this whole scene leads us to the next scene of Crosshair being scanned at Camino, which is just the tip of the mirroring in this episode. It's at this point that we cut to Nala Se and the newly appointed either Governor or Grand Moff Tarkin. Many of the Imperials have a ranking on their chest, and in Episode 1 we see Tarkin have an Admiral rank, and in Episode 3 we see him have either a Grand Moff or a Governor rank. And we don't really know at this point because I believe he doesn't become a Grand Moff until later on, but we know he was already a Governor technically, and he also becomes the Governor of the Outer Rim. He's even called Admiral Targan in the first episode. Now I believe at this point he's actually a Governor, but it is possible that he is the Grand Moff already. I don't really think so though. Nalase and Targan watch Crosshair as they talk about how he is responding well to the strengthening of the inhibitor chip. As they talk, an Imperial officer named Rampart walks into the room which Tarkin tells him his chain code implementation has been very successful, and they agree that building a strong foundation for the new empire is critical at this time. It's at this point that Rampart is seemingly fascinated with Crosshair, and then Tarkin drops a little hint to something that we got back in Star Wars Rogue One. He asks about Project War Mantle, and we actually heard about Project Ma War Mantle back in Rogue One, we don't really know much about it, but we learn more in this episode of what it potentially is. Rampart tells him that it's on schedule, and his top recruits are ready to begin their training under their new commander, which he plans to make Crosshair. In the next scene, we see the same four characters walking through the halls of Kamino, as Rampart states that a strong ruling government needs more soldiers to maintain the order. However, Rampart believes there's a more efficient less cost-effective way of getting the soldiers they need. As he takes him to four top recruits and tells them that a squad like this with an elite soldier taught by top clones could strengthen the empire and make it a formidable army. Back at the crash site, Tech and Echo are making repairs to the outside of the ship. Now I will stop to say that one of my only problems with this episode is the breathing mask that the characters wear on the moon in this episode really kind of bugs me that they that we don't see them in their helmets because in the clone wars we see clones breathing in space with the helmets and we know that their helmets actually filter the air and allow them to breathe i literally was thinking this while the episode was going on as i thought of it the scene of hunter getting his mask knocked off happened and i realized it was all kind of a plot device so you know dave come on <laughs> as the two are making repairs Echo sees claw marks on the ship that weren't there when they landed. Tech comes over to check it out after installing the capacitor, and then a creature comes to the capacitor and takes it. Omega then examines the plot device, I mean mask, as she tries one on and Record barges around groaning about his head, making it a big deal actually. As they try to figure out what's going on, the creature crawls over the top of the ship with the capacitor, and Omega gets a good look at it. Tech reveals that it's most likely a Ordo Moon Dragon that is feeding off of the energy of the ship, hence why it took the capacitor. Now I do believe that the moon they have crashed on is a moon of Ordo, and we have heard of Ordo before. Ordo was a Mandalorian world that was home to an archaic arsenal, and this archaic arsenal housed an ancient Mandalorian rally lance. Now, during the reign of the Galactic Empire, Crime Lord Dryden Voss of the Crimson Dawn Syndicate had had the same Rally Master Lance stolen from his private collection. Maybe this is just a coincidence, but I think it could be a hint that the crew could potentially work for Crimson Dawn later on in the season. Now, maybe that's a reach, but either way, I think it is a really cool Easter egg. Hunter takes his position of leader as Teco, Teco, <laughs> Tech and Echo work on getting the ship operational as Hunter decides he'll go after the dragon to get the capacitor back. Omega wants to go with to be a helpful member of the crew, so reluctantly, Hunter agrees as Wrecker continues co to complain about his head. It's at this point we're taken back to Kamino, where the elite soldiers are being studied by the Kaminoan droid from episode 1, as the most vocal member of the elite squad proclaims his dislike of being poked at. However, we get some insight from this character 
as to why troopers would loyally and willingly join the Empire. He states that the Empire has given him food, money, and a roof over his head, and that's more than the Republic ever did for him. And I'm sure that's actually another way troopers maybe convince themselves to join. We're then taken to a scene of Tarkin, Rampart, and the Prime Minister of Kamino talking about the clone's intensive training since creation, and how the conscripted recruits could never be as good of an army. Rampart argues that the soldiers who willingly enlist have more value to him as they're loyal and cost less. It's at this point, being the devious guy he is, Tarkin orders the new elite squad, led by Crosshair, to go to Onderon and do what the Bad Batch wouldn't, wipe out Saw Gerrera's camp. The Prime Minister walks away after hearing the order, as you can tell that he's plotting to find a way to keep his troopers as the main focal point of the Empire's army. On the moon of Ordo, Hunter and Omega track down the dragon as Omega is shown copying Hunter once again. She asks if she can learn to track the way that Hunter does, and Hunter explains that each of the Bad Batch has their own unique skill. However, he leaves out Crosshair, and Omega notes that he shouldn't be angry at Crosshair for what happened because he can't help it due to his inhibitor chip. Hunter then tells her that he isn't upset with Crosshair but with himself for leaving a member of the crew behind. Omega tries to ease his mind, telling him that they will once again get him back to the team. On the ship of the Elite Trooper Squad, the trooper from earlier, who stated that the Empire took care of all of his needs, questions why Crosshair was made the leader of the team, to his face. <laughs> Bold. He asks him why the Empire is looking for soldiers and not clones, as he feels times are changing, and he makes a light threat to enjoy being the commander for now. We're taken to the ground where Saw's group is shown saying that he, ha he is away at a rendezvous point, as their defense system was alerted. They prepare for an enemy as Crosshair shoots a few of them from the shadows a few clicks away and the elite squad moves in. Saw's group is on the ground saying that he is away at a rendezvous point. Their defense systems were alerted as they all get prepared for an enemy to attack. Crosshair shoots one of them and the elite squad troopers move in just like Omega and Hunter do on the dragon. Back on the moon of Ordo, Hunter and Omega are closing in on the dragon and find the capacitor. As Hunter goes to grab it, the dragon attacks them from the shadows, just like Crosshair did. Now the dragon knocks down Hunter, taking, his, taking the capacitor and hitting his mask off his face, leaving him breathless. And this is exactly why it's a plot device. <laughs> if he had his helmet, that wouldn't have happened. <laughs> Omega realizes that he needs air and puts his mask back on him but he is already passed out due to a lack of oxygen. So Omega does the only reasonable thing. Goes after the dragon herself. Back at Saw's camp, the troopers mercilessly kill the civilians of the camp, and as some try to escape, Crosshair makes a perfect shot killing the pilot of the ship. Crosshair asks the remaining camp members if they have any info on Saw, and as they tell him nothing, he responds that they're useless to the Empire. The trooper of reason will call him, the Trooper of Reason, we'll call him, <laughs> tells him these are civilians and that they should be brought in, sort of like Anakin telling Mace that Palpatine must stand trial. Crosshair tells him those aren't their orders, as the Trooper of Reason says that it's wrong and none of them will do it as he goes to take charge of the group. Crosshair tells him that they put him in charge because he's willing to do what needs to be done, and then he shoots and kills the Trooper of Reason. The camp members surrender, and Crosshair asks the second in command of the group where Saw is. As she begins to say a sentence of she doesn't know, he shoots her before she can finish it and says, I believe you. I will say Crosshair has one of the coolest voices of all the clones. And D. Bradley Baker, you're doing a fantastic job. Keep it up, dude. I hope you get the big bucks and I hope that bag is worth every penny. You're doing fantastic for this show. Following this, he orders the other elite troopers to kill the civilians as they unleash their weapons upon them, killing them. This episode was probably the darkest one so far, even with Order 66 happening in the first episode. I think it's a trend that will continue in this show, and it's a fitting one at that. Omega finds the capacitor back on the moon of Ordo, and the dragon freaks out from the power of her flashlight. Hunter wakes up outside of the cave that she's in and calls for Omega as then we're shown Omega has kind of a moment like Rey's in The Rise of Skywalker, 
as she has an almost forced connection with the being as it goes from being freaked out and scared and like wanting the energy of the flashlight to being calm and cool and connected almost as if when Omega put her mind at ease the dragon did too. A lot of fans think that this points to Omega being force sensitive and maybe it does although I still don't believe she is force sensitive. Then Omega throws the dragon her light as it consumes the energy and glows a cool green color. It's actually cool to see. She comes back out of the tunnels with the capacitor in hand and Hunter is surprised to see that she's completed the mission and she never even had to fire her weapon. The elite squad arrives back on Kamino as Rampart and Tarkin talk about the missing trooper. The two of them chalk up the missing trooper to being a casualty of war as Crosshair tells them that Guerrera has, was gone but the mission was still a complete success and him and Rampart agree that the initiative has been positive so far. The two agree that the clones still have a purpose for the time being as Tarkin promotes Rampart to his old position of Admiral and puts him in charge of the initiative. This next scene has a lot of speculation around it, as we're shown Nala Se and the Prime Minister of Kamino discussing going forward with the next phase of their cloning process, as the Django DNA has become degraded. They want to ensure their relationship with the new empire, and the Prime Minister tells Nala Se if her experiments can yield a superior clone, they will be able to do so. Nalase says that she would need a direct source and that it would require a member of the Bad Batch and they wouldn't return willingly. The Prime Minister states that the clones are property of the Kaminoans and they only need one of them and that their survival hinges on it. A lot of people are taking this as a hint that they're creating a force sensitive clone and think that Omega's scene with the dragon is also a hint to her being a force sensitive. I think a lot of people think that Omega is going to be used to try and create Palpatine's clones or something else and I don't personally believe that. I think that they want to use one of the bad match members to create a superior clone compared to that of the Django Fett and of course with the Django Fett DNA degrading a new template would be crucial to them. As the episode mirrors one last time we're shown Crosshair arriving at the barracks of the Bad Batch on Kamino and the rest of the elite squad is shown going in as well. And it still has the marks that Wrecker had scratched into it, counting the possible days of their missions. Crosshair looks around the room and clearly misses his brothers deep down on the inside. It's a very sad moment as we know he's not in control of his actions and deep down he's probably heartbroken over the actions he's committed in the name of the Empire. The Bad Batch get the ship operating and fly off as Wrecker has a surprise for Omega. He brings her to her new room which he decorated and it's the, shown to be the same seat that she was sitting in in episode 2. It's kind of a sweet moment really and it would make Wrecker potentially turning against them because of his chip even more sad if that were to happen. The Bad Batch welcome Omega as official part of the team as the credits roll on yet another great episode. Episode 3 had so many little details and things that probably were overlooked or missed. I probably didn't even get all of them, but I know I covered a lot. Hopefully I went deep enough and you guys enjoyed this breakdown. Let me know if you want me to continue breaking down episodes of The Bad Batch. I hope you guys are having a great one. Don't forget to smash like if you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more awesome Star Wars content, hit that subscribe for me and follow my channel, Vader's Lair. Have a good one guys. May the force be with you.